murder in the second degree, Stone? You have to show the public you go after the rich? Your client killed in cold blood. I don't care if he's homeless or owns Grand Central Station. You'll get murdered, too, from the grand jury. It's abusive. Under extreme emotional disturbance, you're lucky if you get manslaughter, too, the and you know it. emotionally disturbed do not plan as well as Himes did. It's a crime of passion, Stone. Pure and simple. A crime of passion is never pure, and it's certainly not simple. Uh, Dr. Lowenstein, you have previously testified that when you came home just before midnight, Carla told you that she had hit Dee Dee earlier that evening. Is that correct? Well, I certainly didn't think it was anything serious. And you also testified that when you came home, Dee Dee was laying in the middle of your living room floor in her school clothes. I thought she was sleeping. Does she usually spend the night on a parquet floor without a blanket? Of course not. Did you go to Dee Dee and check to see if she was all right? I didn't feel it was necessary. Even with a blood stain under her head? I didn't see that. Oh, please, sir. I direct you to examine People's Exhibit number 37. It is a photograph of a blood stain on your living room floor. A blood stain measuring 27 inches by 38 inches. A blood stain the size of a small rug. It was dark. There wasn't uh, many lights about. And, uh... So when you saw your unconscious daughter on the floor and that stain on the same floor, did you pick up a phone and call 911? I already... Did you pick up a phone and call her pediatrician? You're twisting everything I say! Did you even bother to pick up Dee Dee, or did you leave her in a pool of her own blood? We have court-ordered permission to search the premises. This warrant covers your apartment, your car, and all your personal possessions. Would you like some coffee? Ben. Yeah? Looks like black market ludes. Maybe the same kind they found in Victor. Mr. Stone. This is locked. You have the key? Chest. What were you hoping for? Is defense ready for its summation? Your Honor, at this time, against advice of counsel, the defendant wishes to testify in her own behalf. Miss Swimmer, you realize you'll be subject to cross-examination. I do, Your Honor. I urge you to reconsider. Listen to advice of counsel. However, I won't prevent you from testifying. Do you swear to tell the truth, so help you God? I certainly do. Miss Schwimmer. Did you conspire with Celeste McClure to bomb the Chelsea Women's Choice Center as well as seven other abortion clinics? Yes, I did. Then you're guilty of the charges leveled against you. Not before God. Can you explain why you're innocent before God? Objection. This case is being judged on the temporal plane, Your Honor. Sustained. How dare you object, Mr. Stone? We've done our homework. You were baptized. You go to communion. That's enough, And you prosecute me. All the abortions in that clinic are murder, and you know it. Your Honor. It must stop. Miss Wimmer. Mary Donovan's death was tragic. But if it prevents one abortion, the scales are balanced. Abortion must end. Miss Swimmer, that will be are all. Are we a nation who can tolerate the abortionist sticking his hand in a mother's womb and strangling God's the creation? The court officer will remove Miss Swimmer. Your Honor, I have only one question to ask of the defendant. Which is? If abortion is murder, no matter how you feel about Mary Donovan, aren't you guilty of the murder of her unborn child?
Your Honor, the accused has stated in both direct and cross-examination that he has never committed a violent act, that he is a man of conscience, a prisoner because of politics. In view of these statements, the state would like to call an additional witness. Objection. The prosecution has rested, Your Honor. Of his own volition, Mr. O'Connell has made statements that call for rebuttal, sir. Overruled. Call your witness, Mr. Stone. Thank you, Your Honor. The people call Bridget McDermott. Mrs. McDermott, are you married? I was. Do you have children? I had two. What happened to your husband and your children? That man murdered them. Objection, Your Honor. Absolutely irrelevant. Rebutting the defendant's sworn testimony is relevant as to character, Your Honor. Overruled. Proceed, Mr. Stone. Mrs. McDermott, describe in your own words the events of May 6, 1981. John, my husband, and I were on High Street, Kensington, on our way to the cinema with Sheila and Tommy. Your children? Yes. We were passing a candy store. I remember because the children wanted to stop. My husband saw a man tying his shoe, kneeling on the pavement. That man. When he was done, he got up and hurried away. But he'd left his satchel on the curb next to the police van. Would you describe the satchel? Come on, Your Honor. Please continue, Mrs. McDermott. It was, uh, it was black, leather, with a grip. Like any businessman's in the city. Thank you. Now tell us what happened next. Uh, my husband called to the man. You know, I mate, you forgot your satchel. And then he... He picked up the case and started after him, and... And? And he was blown to bits, and Sheila, and Tommy, and half the street. There was nothing but a shower of glass and blood. Mrs. McDermott, the man with the satchel, are you absolutely positive, without a question of a doubt, that that man was Ian O'Connell, the defendant? You hardly forget the face of the man who slaughtered your entire family. Take a good look. There's your human error. He'll live with it. By morning, he'll probably love it. You think I sold out? It doesn't matter what I think. If it does, I'll tell you. But it's something you gotta decide for yourself. You gotta shave yourself in the morning speech? Maybe. You think yourself as a black lawyer or a lawyer who's black? Depends on the context. You made a decision based on something from within. You live with it, you examine it. That's all you got. Think by morning I'll come to love it? No, but I don't think you'll have any problem with the guy in the mirror. I'll see you tomorrow.